Have you ever wondered how dismissive avoidant attachment styles sabotage their relationships? Well, in this video, we are going to talk about one of those major ways that you may recognize as a dismissive avoidant yourself or with a dismissive avoidant loved one. And we'll also, if you stick around to the end, talk a little bit about what you can do. So first and foremost, dismissive avoidant attachment styles, we have to remember their roots. So dismissive avoidance often grew up in a dynamic where there's a certain degree of emotional neglect occurring, meaning that they tend to grow up not getting their needs met. And then they deal with not getting their needs met by essentially breaking off from the need to get their needs met by other people. And so because there's this pervasive neglect, at least of their emotional needs, if not many of their needs beyond just their emotional needs, they start going, okay, I can't get my needs met from other people. So I'm going to learn to meet my needs myself and become hyper-independent. And when they do that, their subconscious mind gets programmed with positive emotional associations because doing that creates relief from this pervasive feeling of rejection or essentially denial of their needs being able to get met in the emotional department. And so they feel better. They feel empowered. This is part of why you see dismissive award and attachment cells become so freedom loving. So here's what actually happens at some where sort of some path along the way, a dismissive avoidant goes, I can't get my needs met by others. Why am I bothering to try? And when they say, why am I bothering to try? It prompts them into being able to meet their needs better themselves or soothe through their creature comforts, for example. But that why bother mindset is one of the biggest things that can also sabotage their relationships as adults. And I call this fatalistic thinking, right? There's this term or this idea that a dismissive avoidant when they are consistently yearning for something from somebody that can't give it, eventually it feels like it gives you some sense of relief to say, well, why am I even bothering with this person? So how does that actually show up in their adult romantic relationships? Well, unfortunately, this fatalistic thinking can basically cause the dismissive avoidant to take themselves out of the race or stop themselves from even trying. And we'll see this in a lot of different places. Now, remember, the reason they do this is if you are constantly feeling like you're faced with rejection, sometimes it's easier to just say, well, I'm not even going to try at all. And then I don't have to get rejected. So it's actually a deep subconscious protective mechanism, but we'll see dismissive avoidance when they get criticized in relationships. Sometimes we'll be like, well, why am I bothering to try if I'm just going to get criticized? Um, we'll see dismissive avoidance if they feel like something's not working. They may be quick to opt out and say, well, why, why are we bothering to try to make this work? We'll often see dismissive avoidant attachment cells not chase as much in relationships because they'll be like, well, if there's a problem, why bother? We'll also see dismissive avoidance sometimes not try to solve for conflict, not try to resolve things. They'll feel like if there's a conflict, why am I bothering? I'm just going to avoid the situation instead. And so this fatalistic thinking, although it may create this sort of early relief or instant relief for them, can actually wreak havoc on a relationship long term. So what do we do? Well, number one. We have to be able to recondition this mindset. We reprogram this at a subconscious level by using something called I, I call a cost-benefit tool. We talk a lot about this in our 21 Ways to Reprogram the Subconscious Mind course. If you want to check out that course, you can check it out using the link down below. I'll put a link there. So I have some really exciting news, and it's that integrated attachment theory training is back. In other words, you can be trained to become a relationship coach certified in integrated attachment theory in literally 60 days. So who is this for? Well, of course, this is for any individual who wants to make an impact and really be of service to others while also obtaining freedom and flexibility and abundance in their lives. And this is also for anybody who's already a counselor, a therapist, a coach, and just really wants to expand their toolkit. We've had so many people enter into the Integrated Attachment Theory program because they're just looking to obtain a certain degree of mastery in terms of understanding their own attachment patterns and also the attachment patterns of maybe their children or partner or other loved ones in their lives so they can really support those people and understand them more deeply. Now, please keep in mind that the last two times we ran this program, we filled up very fast. In fact, we oversold the programs and sold up completely. So if you're interested, click the link below to learn more and dive in with me. And I'd love to see you on the other side before seats run out. Now, in this 
um, course, we have one tool of 21 and it's called cost benefit. And what we do is we write all the costs of the thing we're trying to change and all the benefits of changing it. And then we leverage repetition and emotion to really recondition because that fires and wires new neural pathways over time. So in this case, what you would do is you would write out all of the costs of staying in this fatalistic thinking point of view. It might have served as a child when you didn't have access to different resources, but as an adult, you keep yourself in learned helplessness. So we write out all the costs of not taking action, all the costs of not trying to you know, hash out conflict, um, work at something, communicate through problems and challenges, all the costs of never building those skills, of never taking those actions to our love life, to our personal life, to our personal growth. We write out all the costs so we feel negatively about that. Then we leverage and we want to write at at least 25 costs if we can get there. And then we write out all the benefits of taking the action, all the benefits of growing, of improving, of taking those actions, learning to fine tune or hone your communication skills, um, learning to work through problems in relationships, learning to invest in yourself so that you can grow and expand all the benefits. And then we reread this, or we can record it into our phone and listen to this on a daily basis for about 21 days. And then we're going to start seeing some momentum and some shifts. But, you know, a lot of this fatalistic thinking can show up in job situations, romantic relationships, family relationships, friendships. I mean, we can see this all over. And I think when we really evaluate the costs and then really see the benefits of taking new action, we can see that needle start to move, start to change. And I think if you're on the receiving end of a loved one who you feel like may not want to invest in the relationship the way you would hope they would, I think having that understanding and empathy can be beneficial to realize, hey, this may not be about me. It may be about them being stuck in learned helplessness, not knowing how to stretch themselves or that they even can or should, because as a child trying to do that, trying to work through something with somebody wasn't accessible to them. And so they got conditioned to basically go into the zone of learned helplessness and just rely on themselves. But this is part of the dismissive avoidance journey to work on this in order to become more securely attached. So I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you have more questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, again, you can check out the 21 ways to reprogram your subconscious. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in future videos.